All right. Um, so welcome, folks, to another episode of Search Party's playback series. Um, so this week um, we have Ethan Holland in with us. And uh, again, as you'll notice from the first two, we're seeing close and once again, I've turned up another week wearing the same outfit. It's a good outfit. Yeah, you know <laughs> what I mean? Don't let it go to waste. Um, but yes, uh, for anyone watching for the first time, this uh, playback series is uh, a chance for us to chat to our favourite local musicians and uh, talk about their stories, uh, the music, the local music that they like. Um, you know, chat about about what they have going on, and also, um, you know, find out a bit about what we're listening to at the moment too. So, uh, to begin, Ethan, thanks very much for thanks for, for coming me. on. Yeah. And um, so, uh, we first got acquainted um, as part of the Help Musicians Fan Base mm-hmm. Builder Program. Um, so, like, I, I suppose it's better just. Letting you explain what have we been doing over the past like three months? I mean, great program first of all. Like, met loads of like really cool musicians, really talented musicians as well. Yeah. And don't know if you're going tomorrow. To the no, I'm shows. I'm working tomorrow unfortunately, oh, but um. A couple of us are going, so good yeah. to meet them again. Um, and I, you will be listening to this way later on, but oh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, but Lemonade Shoelace, a good friend of ours as mm-hmm. well. Is going to be playing uh, in the Ulster Sports Club uh, for the Fans Most Wanted, isn't it called, Paddy? Yeah, yeah. Fans, the shoe brand. Yeah. Um, so they are uh, doing this big final. It's like a worldwide competition. And, uh, it's and, uh, and Rory and the guys from Lemonade have got into the final of it, which is mind blowing. So It is really cool. That's yeah. from Northern Ireland as well. Absolutely. Like, if not now, so we've been talking about this for the past couple of weeks. It's like, it's just crazy that someone from Northern Ireland is like, yeah. um, you know, representing us for that for such a big competition in the final four, and the live stream is happening tomorrow night, um, from Ulster Sports. So we'll wish Rory and all the lads all the best, best and of luck. hopefully by the time this comes out, he'll have won. Imagine that would be so cool. Yeah. And again, like somebody who was on the program with us, mm-hmm. um, so it just shows you like how, um, you know, like the quality that was on the program too, and like it's been great to be exposed to that. Exactly, like not only meeting new musicians, but also like making friends as well. Yeah, like I'm still in contact with a lot of them. Yeah, I'm well, sure I got my first gig from you as well. Yeah, so <laughs> like that's uh, I suppose that's a great place to start yeah. because, like, <clears throat> um, from chatting to you through all the wee workshops and everything else, like. Um, you know, I was going like I hadn't like specifically heard of like of you just yet yeah. and when I got to know you for the program, um, I was like, you know, I heard your stuff and like and checked out the social media and I was like, God, this guy's really talented and like <laughs> and then getting to talk to you, I was like, you know, you were saying about like um only starting up the project during like lockdown and oh, yeah. um got out busking as well. And it, going yeah. out busking and so like you because it's only a relatively new thing, you haven't had the chance because of COVID <laughs> to get out and like gig or nothing yet. So I, I already started like the music stuff like buying on COVID. Yeah. Like, so before uni, so. which is like a blessing, but also <laughs> like you know obviously yeah. a hindrance because like you have you've had to wait for a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Got to get the fit in somehow. Like. Yeah, but like I think it's a good thing as well because like obviously COVID is like has been a good time for everybody to get creative. Yeah. Um, without so. as many distractions going on in each other's lives. Mm-hmm. Um I'm finding out now that like coming back in the you know, proper coming into the office to work and um and you know, getting out and gigging again and um and all these different things, like balancing all of that. Yeah. It's actually like it's harder to to sit down and write again, you know? Yeah, it's a bit weird like I've just started uni and it's definitely taken a good amount of time away from like songwriting. Yeah. Like start of lockdown, I was writing like maybe five or six songs a week. Yeah, you were like... just because because you had no other way to, to yeah. spend the time. You're just um, you're just locked in a room and you're demoing out stuff. And that, that was a it was a great opportunity to to be able to do that. Um, I don't think we'll get that chance again. Like to have all that time. Um, yeah. so in that way, COVID's been great. But, um, but 
you you do have like so much to look forward to now that exactly. you can, no, it's all you like can get out right there and performing. Um and just uh, I think that's a good uh time now for us to like uh listen to the first track, you know, that you've picked um by a yeah. local musician. So my local musician or band is called Eons and I'm really good friends with their lead singer, Aaron. And actually our friendship started during lockdown. I think it's like when things started to ease, we began jamming out in like um, Castle Park, Forest, Back and Banger, jamming out in our acoustic yeah. guitars and singing. And back then I could like, I would not sing in front of anyone. So just like sing like one to one, someone like someone you know, someone you're friends with, like really built that confidence. Yeah. And then going on busking, really built the confidence in singing, but yeah. She's really talented. She's really talented. Her band's like crazy amazing. If you love that sort of funk rock stuff, you'll definitely like it. So, Great. the song is called "Smile" by Eons. Love it. Great choice. Let's listen to it now.
So, that's us back um, to the playback series. And before we move any further, folks, it's worth mentioning that um, this uh, is being produced for uh, Radio YMP and Youth Action NI as part of their Our Story in the Making program. Um, so, uh, Our Story in the Making is a project that is uh, bringing together, you know, and producing interviews with uh, artists um, and politicians and young people and, you know, social action projects all across the country and, and just allowing people to share their story on our platform. So thanks to everyone who's been involved so far and um, I'm, glad, I'm glad Playback has been able to be a part of that. And uh, also for any musicians out there who are watching, um, there's a really great part of our story in the making called uh, Next Big Thing, which is uh, a songwriting competition. Uh, and the grand prize is uh, £4,000 for mm-hmm. the winning song, um, which is wow, you know, uh, uh, alongside a whole host of other uh, prizes like commercial radio play, uh, you know, a re- recording session in the studio, a professional video, photo shoot, a whole yeah. lot, whole works, you know what I mean? Proper, like, the best really starting good. blocks you could get. So, here, enter it yourself. You can go ahead. <laughs> I, um, I'll get on it. But, uh, yes, uh, please go to um, Our Story in the Making. Uh, go to their website and then look for uh, Next Big Thing and enter. But, got that out of the way. Mm-hmm. So, um, even the next part um, that I want to chat about is, like, you know... Uh, we've talked about you know COVID and like you just getting started in music, um, yeah. but um, the way you've sort of tackled that, you know, as you said, has been through um, like performing for people for the first time. It's been through busking, mm-hmm. and um, and you're from Bangor, yeah. Um, so was it more challenging to to like to do that out in Bangor than it was in like to come into Belfast, like with yeah. there being more footfall maybe in Belfast? Actually, I've never. Bust in Banger yet? Oh, like, right, I've just okay. been jamming with friends. And oh, stuff, jamming but, yeah. and banging then too. And then, so I like, I just busked in Belfast first of all for me. Yeah. So. And was that daunting to do that? You know, it's it's your first. Um, it was alright. Like, I don't really focus on people walking by. It was just more like I want to have fun. Yeah. Just perform. And I suppose you've got a different angle and stuff as well because a lot of the buskers around town not to knock it but like a lot of people are performing mostly covers of stuff Mm -hmm. um, because that's what draws the crowds and that's what um, you know is ultimately those people are to like um, you know earn more money and stuff but Mm -hmm. um, you're doing a lot of your own songs and stuff Um, yeah occasionally I've got like a little busking playlist of like songs that like covers that I do and then yeah. I'll throw in some of my originals yeah. like um, before I went to your gig like to perform that first time yeah. for fail I like I went to Belfast with my guitar just and then after like having dinner I just went out played like, played, like my whole set <laughs> for yeah. practice and that's how I just felt comfortable on stage from then brilliant and so you'd done your your first sort of like performance for fail and fubble up in mm-hmm. the waterworks yeah um, with us and um and you're really like, you know, when I tell you that place is usually really dead, mm-hmm. um, it's really dead. <laughs> um, I've been like doing sound engineer at those wee events um, every year, I think for the past four years. Really? Wow. And, um, and some of the time it's due to the weather, you know, it's it's always a really bad day. I don't know why. It, but it, fair, it was raining a little it bit. It was raining yeah. in the morning, um, but it cleared up afterwards. But like, other years it's been like proper like storms and stuff Serious. and yeah and but sometimes <laughs> even when it's been a good day like you know it's a dreary sort of event and mm-hmm. not a lot of people turn up I think they just do it as a formality yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but really on the days you played you know like the people that were in the park you know came over and like yeah we um, got a good card like by the end of the yeah. reception so um did that give you a good buzz you know playing mm-hmm. it was really fun yeah like, once I got past the first song, I was just pure enjoying it. It yeah. was really good. And um, and in terms of your... It, you've got, like, a, a sort of unique style as well. Um, lots of, like, jazzy stuff in there, but mm-hmm. it's, like, pop songs, like, at its core, really, I would yeah, say. But I don't, it's, like, so hard to describe, like, or to put a label on it. Like, 
it's like indie maybe a bit of heaviness like here and there and then like really jazzy chords yeah and where does that come from do you think Ooh, time to think um I mean, I was in a jazz band playing guitar at school, playing a grammar school for a couple of years, and I moved on to play piano there because, like, there was no one to play piano. But I think just experiencing and learning all those different chords really added to it. Like, yeah, I remember my I did guitar lessons for like a couple of years, and I was just like jamming out in one of the practice rooms, and my old guitar teacher comes in and says, "Yo, Ethan, check <laughs> check out these two chords." And I was like, okay. So he showed me it. And then like within an hour, I was just like messing about, re- arranging some stuff. And it was like, it, I think I just used that chord. It's like, oh, that's a lovely chord. What can I do with it? And then it ended up being like my chord progression that I came up with for Forest. Oh, It's It's coming out February, hopefully. Oh, we'll get, we'll get yeah. talking about that. Don't worry. <laughs> um, but yeah, like... Not to be like, oh, here's a cool new thing the guys are, and all the kids are into, <laughs> like jazz. But, yeah. you know, I, f- I think we're really in the midst of like a real jazz revival at the moment in terms mm-hmm. of like, if you look at pop music and, and what the biggest artists in the world are doing now, there's like so much like f- elements of like funk and jazz. Yeah. If you look at like, you know, Doja Cat, like Kiss Me More, like a, oh, a yeah. couple of uh, months ago, like the... The jazziness of that wee chord progression and like mm. the stuff Julie is doing and everything else like um there there's a, a sort of looking back in a way that'd be like oh let's like use all this spaciness from all these jazz chords yeah, and like um and I feel like um you know a lot of people are like are getting on it but I think that's really ingrained in, in what you do yeah it's definitely going in that direction like I guess modern music now it's not as much as like songwriter four code four chords only it's it's very yeah like, people are actually getting into the music now fear like theory is becoming such an important like mm-hmm. element yeah. of of music and like songwriting now um as you said <laughs> it's it's really far away from punk music at the minute um, yeah I, I feel like not to knock punk i like i'm i feel like for the longest time, like our band was like a punk mm, band. I always revert to punk. Yeah. And um, but it's just like, you know, you pick and choose what you like from from different mm. types of music. But right now, I feel like the complexity of of jazzy stuff, and I think even that probably comes from um this sudden burst of like lo-fi hip hop, you yeah, know, yeah. and like study beats and stuff that there was like yeah. over the last like ten years. Um, has probably like creeped its way into like music and you know if you think about like vlogs and stuff you know like people are watching Casey Neistat and it's got like oh, one of these yeah. like we like um jazzy like exactly and back and beats watches, like all the time yeah I, I love Casey Neistat like but um but all those three things of them being like that's that's like the standard now even mm-hmm. you know if you look like six years ago and Drake with like Hotline Bling with like the wee oh, Bossa yeah. Nova and, like elevator music in the background um, I think it's all accumulated and now I like having this big burst of exactly. nostalgia I really gotta touch up on my theory I haven't done theory in ages uh, so, like, I just tell me about it when I write music I literally just like go with what sounds good <laughs> yeah I'm, I think that's the thing it's like you, do you really need to like hit the books with it or is it like um, I don't know what I'm getting at but is it maybe just like um not so much just doing the first thing comes to your mind, but just sort yeah. of, you know, trying to think, how can I make this a, a variation of, like, the most mm. basic thing I can do? I mean, theory's good to, like, expand. Like, sometimes if you're writing music, it can get a bit repetitive. Yeah. But you also don't want to get lost in the theory. Like, it's all about the soul. Yeah. It's all about what Absolutely. feels good to you. Because I think it's most guitar players will know, like, you learn, like, a pentatonic skill when you're young. Mm-hmm. And then you feel like that's you can't like move outside of that, yeah. uh, or like a minor or major scale, mm-hmm. you can't move outside of that, or else like you're gonna get like sent to hell or something. But like, um, or you're really gonna it's really gonna sound off, you know. But when you so you you spend your whole life writing songs and like you don't really experiment outside of that, but yeah. then you randomly play something out. Mm-hmm. or a different type of chord one day that shouldn't 
really go according to your theory, but then like it just sounds right, and then it sort of it then that becomes part of like the yeah. way you write songs. No, and I stuff. just love I love experimenting like that. Yeah, and um, we'll take this opportunity now to uh, listen to our track of the week. So Search Party are picking um, a track from a group we found during the week there called Fraulein and uh, this one's called Belly. So let's give it a listen. segment of today's show um we're here with Ethan Holland and uh the last thing we're going to talk about is like what you have coming up Mm -hmm. um so as you already mentioned it's such an exciting time for you because you're bursting on the scene um I feel like online you've already got like um like such a good presence yeah uh, I'm like pretty in with like the social media stuff yeah oh you're a master of that like (laughs) Um, because like you know the you've got the followers you've got like mm. and like the clips and stuff you put up you know they really get good like traction and stuff and of course it's because like the music you're putting out is really good and you're <laughs> awful talented Thank you. um, you'll not fit your head through the door going out there <laughs> but um, but no I sincerely mean that and like and that's why I've wanted to work with you so much because mm-hmm. like I really like the stuff that you're doing no, it's been really great working with you um, but uh, the most 
recent thing you've done there was uh, releasing the video for Love Bite, your single. Ooh, I, yeah, I released Love Bite on like Spotify, which is really exciting because like, yeah. I feel like real. But yeah, currently working on a music video. Oh yes, the music video yeah. is coming and... Um, it's really exciting. Yes, it was a Spotify release there. Mm-hmm. Um, and we mentioned it briefly there, but uh, you've got another single in the works. Mm-hmm. Can you tell yeah. us a bit more about that? So this, so the next song that I'm planning on releasing is called Forest. And I actually got the opportunity to work with Start Together Studio. I think it was their Ready to Roll Twenty One um, program, and that was funded by Arts Council. So it was really cool. I got to work with Ross Bickerstaff on drums. Um, I know a guy called Matt. He's in Anna's number. Well, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he he did some like keys for me and gave me a lot of tips about keys and arrangement. So it was really good working with like other musicians because. Prior to that, I'd just be working in my bedroom alone, like, and it'd be really hard, like, what, um, just to know, like, ooh, would this sound better, or like to have someone to go to for advice? Yeah. But yeah. Well, that that's you know that's something I didn't like find out until mm-hmm. like years later about like the power of like collaboration. I know, right? Because like, obviously, being in a band, a lot of the you know, decisions that we make with the music are very insular. Mm -hmm. And the producers we work with initially were just like, it was more just like an engineer just to go like, right, well, let's record this. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's all like an engineer started to do. But um, we got a great experience in Start Together actually with um, Rocky where he like actually took on a real producer's role and and, like, and really collaborated on Mm -hmm. it with us like, on a track and and give us feedback and stuff and and that was the yeah. first time we were like whoa you know like somebody else is giving their opinion like uh, like if if you hear like a lot of even the before album there there's like tracks that are like way too long mm-hmm. we were laughing getting ready for like our last set there playing one of the songs and we were like why is there a double chorus like thirty mm-hmm. seconds into this song <laughs> like um. And it's it's so important to like just go out and like and say to the other people what do you think of this? Yeah. Um, you no, know. the producers that start together are amazing. Yeah. I worked with Ryan McGordy for my song, and he he like put quite a bit of input in that. It was That's really fantastic. good. It really transformed my sound from like bedroom lo-fi pop or bedroom like indie pop to like proper like synths and like surrounding sounds. Unreal. It's like really cool. Like I can't wait to hear it, and mm-hmm. so can't wait it, till it comes out. So Forest coming out in February, mm-hmm. twenty twenty two. Why such a long release schedule? So I have Love Bite that came out on September 9th, and then October is gonna be my music video. Hopefully, planning yeah. on like planning on a lyric video and a proper DIY music video, and yeah. that's where my sort of artistic flair comes in. With like my dad, he's filming it all. Yeah, and then I'm planning on doing like some animation. Yeah, you and your dad seem to be, like, really in <laughs> touch with, like, yeah. content creation and mm-hmm. stuff, too. So I'm really excited to see what that no, looks like. Really he's really talented. But even the fact that you've got it all planned out like that, too. Yeah. And you're going to uni at the same time, you know. You've really got <laughs> it mad. sorted out. I'm, like, so exhausted. I, I was sleeping on the way here. <laughs> <laughs> sleeping in the car on my bad Yeah. Um, but uh, then the other exciting thing is that you're going to be playing with us up mm-hmm. uh, in yeah. our show in the Students' Union. It's just going to be great crack. Um, can't wait very excited for it yeah so excited yeah um, it's somewhere like a, well, I was going to say we have been down to play since we've we played the student union actually twice yeah, but <laughs> I assumed that we hadn't <laughs> but we haven't played the new student union yet yeah. so like um, that'll be really cool and um, and a great lineup, you know mm-hmm. us you Lonely Astronauts and um, and Virgins are going to be on the yeah, bill too yeah it's going to be awesome Unbelievable, and it's a fiver in, so you know, go. Yeah, just a fiver. Might <laughs> just as well go, go in. Like, yeah. Um, and even has been uh, fabulous having you on the show. I think um, me. And uh, lucky enough that you're uh, gonna perform a track for us mm-hmm. here. So yeah. tell us a bit about the track you're gonna play. The uh, track I'm gonna play is actually Forest, and it's just gonna okay. be like all stripped back, just me and my guitar. So yeah, love it. But first time performing. We recording for this, so love it. Well, let's hear it, folks. We're gonna Go. do a wee cut, and Ethan's gonna get set up to play. So enjoy. I'll see you next time. When I walk in the 
Forest. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>